Rick Ross is his birthday, has a birthday today as well. Happy birthday to Rick Ross, man. Now, choosing five Rick Ross songs, that's difficult. No, choosing five Rock M songs is. No, you're right. I mean, because Rick Ross just music. has so much material, man. And, so, and you know, choosing five Rock M songs, yeah. I mean, you kind of just start picking your favorites, but again, you start thinking about the most impactful in the game. But he's 15 deep on classic joints, Mike. Like he has 15 songs that are instant classics. That's why it's like when I. That's why I was like, no, he beat Jay in a versus because Jay don't got 15 songs that are instant classics. Not 15. See, that's an interesting thing, man, because Jay has such a long catalog. Not 15 he, instant. No, classics, no, I agree right? with you. What I'm saying is like people don't look at LL and Rakim like they could beat Jay, but the thing is, they have game changing songs. They have game changing songs. It's different. Yeah. Well, we did see Rick Ross in his verses against Two Chains, and you know, and I love Two Chains. I think that was one of the more lopsided verses that we have seen, because Rick Ross just has so much material, and it's so much that he didn't even mess with. I think that his best song, if we want to talk about like, what's the one song that everybody heralds Rick Ross for? BMF has to be that. I have it on my list. It has to be the song. Like, when he was doing his verses, I thought he was going to close out with BMF. I think Did he you? opened up with it or something. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Hustling. I think that was a strong breakthrough. But I want to hear your list. Because you, you, you really, really support Ross. And you give Ross a lot of high marks as the icon that he is. And I agree with you. I'm gonna, an and I'm going to tell you why. Because I can't think of any artist. See, because you're much imp more impressionable when you're younger, Mike. So there were a lot of guys when I was younger that I wasn't initially fans of that made me into a fan. But no artist has a grown-up has made me into a fan when I wasn't a fan initially the way Rick Ross has. And that's why I speak of him so highly because he took somebody like me who was not a fan of his and he made me a fan with his ability to grow into a great MC with the consistency quality of the albums that he put out, with these great songs that he put out, with these great collaborations that he put out, with these street bangers that he put out. Mike, by the time his third, fourth album came around, I didn't have anything that I could say about him. I was like, well, hold on. I was like, it's like... Yeah. Oh no, he got it. Yeah. Never mind, my bad. I'm sorry. And by the time he when God forgives and I don't came out and I was like, and now he has an album that I can play from beginning to end. I don't have anything else to say about dude. Nobody has made me a fan. Magnificent's a good one. People are naming some good ones in the chat because he has a lot of good ones. Someone said that Rick Ross catalog is better than uh, Kendrick Lamar's. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yes. Maybe not album for album per se, but no, if we're talking like, about like the songs. Lamar's four best albums yeah. are better than Ross's four best albums, but if you were to open those albums out and go song for song, Ross mm. is actually going to win that. Right. Because Kendrick you... is a master at putting a full album together in terms of how it plays, but song for song, not with Ross. What do you think about the songs like Magnificent and Super High? I love those, and I have all of those Super High. But I'm going to tell you what I have at number one, because I did put a song at number one for him, because I think it's the song that really embodies his whole style and his whole movement. Mm -hmm. And that's Amsterdam, Mike. Woo! Amsterdam to me is the record. Like, if you were like, like, like play, play your raw shit, Coop. Like, put yeah. Amsterdam on. That's Amsterdam that raw shit. Good. It's a whole movie, Mike. Every time Amsterdam comes on, it's a movie. Another record I love from him that doesn't get a lot of play is Rich Off Cocaine. I like Rich Off Cocaine. I'm going to tell you another one I got on my list, Mike. Mike, I love Santorini Grease. Santorini Grease was mentioned in the chat. Should be, Mike. Santorini Grease to me is like Amsterdam Part 2. I mean, when he played that at the uh, Versus, man, it was like, As I told Whoa. you, Mike, that's when I realized it was over. I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, this is over. It's like, it's over right here. I was like, because he in his bag right now. He in the bag right now. Amsterdam was uh that was what 2012. Now like like when you play in Santorini Greece, Mike, like that's when I knew it's like, oh, you know what we riding to. You feel what I'm saying? Right. It's like, oh he's no, this is over because he's in pocket. He know what's going on. 
I, I got a quick story about Amsterdam. Because that's back when my people used to live in Miami. You know, shout out to Will. And, you know, I used to go down there frequently, man. And, you know, when you go to Miami, you rent the convertibles, do the whole thing or whatever. But this album was out at that point. And I would go over that, um, I'd go over that bridge, man, head to the South Beach and be blasting that, man. Like the the Miami night skies. It's a movie. Perfect, man. So, I mean, I, I'm partial to that record. That's probably my favorite Rick Ross record. Beautiful record. I love when he's in that mode, man. Like, yes. And he does that mode so well. You know what I mean? And You want to know what it is? It's conversational, just like Jay. And he's the best person since Jay at that conversational flow. You know, I love I love the first Maybach music, right? I love the first Maybach music for a lot of reasons. And one of those reasons is that was Jay in retirement, right? He got on there and showed people that he still had it just like I think he needs to do on this Tana Talks 4. But right. when I listen to Maybach music now, I'm like, man, Ross really got better. Like, he's yes. rapping good, but it's like, he's rapping at his best, but there were levels to go. He no, found man. himself. We actually saw Ross as a rapper find himself with continuous effort. So, Mike, so I'm glad that you brought up Maybach Music 1 because I have something circled, and it's not in my top five for him, but it's the point where I realize it's like, oh shit. Like you just said, it's like, he's getting better. He's dope, mm -hmm. Mike. And it's Maybach music too with Wayne and Kanye. Cause he's standing right next to them and he's just fine right next to them. There's mm -hmm. no slippage in his verse. And that was when I started taking notice of him actually was Maybach music too. Cause I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, yeah, just smack spaz. And then he came in, I was like, oh shit. I'm like, he just held it. And then Wayne came in and I was like, oh, Wayne did now do him. He's right there. I need to start listening to Ross more. Maybach Music 2 is the moment that he made me a fan. Because I watched him. That's prime Ye. That's prime Wayne. Right. He's right there and he sounds just as good. I think we need to do a, a top five Maybach Music. I was actually going to say, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to say is right next to Maybach Music 2, I said, what's everybody else's favorite Maybach song? Because mine is 2. Because People that's are saying Maybach Music 3. Okay, three is a banger. I'm partial to two because that's when I came a fan. Aesthetically speaking, three is probably a better song. Um, and his moment. I'm, I'm surprised people aren't saying four. I thought most more people were going to say four. His moment on Devil in the New Dress, special. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with gang related. It's more of a Triple C's record where he took that MERS, uh, Michael Jackson sample. Oh, come on. Yep. That shit is hard. Yep. It is. I don't know MERS, but I know FERS. I bet I move FERS. That's all you niggas first. <laughs> Fake tough guys. It ain't even in your blood. And you know, we were just talking about being battle tested earlier. I think it's safe to say that he did beat 50 Cent in this battle, right? Mm -hmm. And fair. the only reason why I say that is because, you know, 50 said that he was going to destroy Ross and ruin his career. That didn't happen. Ross elevated no, no, no. after that. Matter of fact, he got better after that, actually. Mike. He did. Like, that. actually, you can look at that point, and that's the point where he got much better, actually. That was like the turning he, point. He was getting better, but the thing with 50 was the turning point where he started becoming all-time great. He was, he's was he been all-time great from that moment on. Are people putting Ross on the list like that? Because he deserves to be somewhere. Mike, I was about to say, we haven't talked about Dice Pineapples. We no. haven't talked about 16. Mike, we haven't talked about my personal favorite, Hold Me Back. I love Hold Me Hold Back. Hold Me Back's hard. What about Aston Hold Martin back. music? Aston Martin. Mike, it's a, Mike, God forgives and I don't. Pick a track. Pirate, <laughs> 10 Jesus Pieces. Like, where you want to go just on that album? Mike, he got it. Yeah, he got it. I like uh, The Devil Is Alive. Love The Devil Is Alive. I love that beat, Mike. Yeah. Mike, you want to know a personal favorite? It's Trap, Trap, Trap with Thug and Wale. Summer 16 with Gotti. Yeah. Idols become rivals. Yeah. He everywhere. Yeah. Nasty. DiCarlo says, yes, Mike, he is top 10. He is above Scarface. Woo. First of all, you're out of pocket and you're wrong. <laughs> I won't do that again. He <laughs> make shit like the diary or the fix. I, listen. 
I disagree with the Carlo on that, but I understand where people are coming from. Untouchable, made, emeritus, deeply rooted. Let's not have this conversation. Terminator 2 says Ross is miles above Eminem. Yeah, man, suit up with M- suit up with Ross. I got, M&M I, I got Ross. I got Ross in my definite top twenty. He not top ten, but he top, top 20. twenty. His catalog is heavy. I think that his where, like, where does he him lack? In the top ten is putting him ahead of Red Man. I don't know if I can do that. Does is it? Does he have an album better than Muddy Waters? Is he better than Red Man as an MC? Because I got Red Man by eleven, twelve. Well, he's not better than Red Man as an MC, but it's similar to the. He doesn't have have an album better than Muddy Waters. Red Man got a great catalog. Docs the name. There's the dark side. What the album? It's not like Red Man don't have a catalog. That's what I'm saying. Well, Three Kings. Like I said, pick something off God Forgives and I Don't. It's about ten classic songs. You know what I love off of that album? Ten Jesus Peace. I told you, Mike, 10 Jesus pieces with Stalin, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, you already mentioned that. He got so many records. Just on that album, Mike, Pirates, Three Kings, Amsterdam, 16, Hold Me Back, 9-11, Dice Pineapples, 10 Jesus pieces. Mm. That's one album, Mike. That's why I was like, well, there's nothing to say. There's nothing to say. Nothing to say after that album. Look, we need to start revisiting where Rick Ross is on an all-time low. Mike, I like God Forgives and I don't. Just as much as I like the Carter Two, and I think that's Wayne's best album. I hold the Carter Two and God Forgives and I Don't in the same high esteem. What about Knife Fight with Cool G Rap? I mean, he's done records with everybody. He's done records with Nas, with Jay, with Cool G Rap. I told you, I don't care what anybody in the chat says. He blistered Nas on Accident Murders. We grew up doing graffiti. Nowadays, it's getting heated. No, 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 no. He He recognizes the moment too. You know, the thing is, you know, I. And you know how I feel about T.I. And I think that he really worked very hard to get that King of the South moniker and, you know, and earn that. There could be an argument made that Rick Ross might be the most rounded MC to ever come out the South. I'm going to go back to the battle-tested thing and lean on T.I. and the blurred lines thing. And I don't know, man. I don't know, man, because he got the 50 thing. Ross is I think not as battle tested as frequently. He's not as battle tested as frequently, and he don't okay. have no word line. So I'm still gonna give Ti the slight edge. Okay. Ross would be the next person I would pick. I think the Ti is more skilled as an MC, but the thing I think is, Ross is a better hit maker, and that's what you're talking about. I think that Ross improving as an MC is one of those things. It's just you love to see it. I love well, no, to no, see no. people. It, no, no, Tip improved. It's just Ross's improvement is greater because he wasn't as good as Tip. Because from I'm Serious, Trap Music, The King, improvement, improvement, improvement. No, you're right. No, I, I think the biggest improvement for me personally, I'm Serious to Trap Music. Yeah. That's a jump. Yeah. It's like uh, Fat Joe going on his Flo Joe shit, The Jealous One's Envy. It's like jump, jump, jump. Yeah, I still... I still hold T.I. higher. It's close, man. Because no, like, when I mean, my when thing I mean, is... I'm higher, it's like this. It's like, when I, if I make a list, it's like T.I. be like 15, Ross be like 17. Like, super close. Maybe side by side. The difference to me, for real, and I think where Ross is as an MC and just, you know, his ability to rhyme has vastly improved to the point where I think that he's perfect for his lane, right? And I think that T.I., he leveled out He's a dope MC, period. But the How biggest thing, the biggest thing is their track selection. And Ross is at a whole nother level. You've said it yourself. That it's Ross is the best beat picker in hip hop. I think he's up there. I think T.I. is one of the worst beat pickers in hip hop. Well, also, too, well, let me say something about Rick Ross right quick. He still flashes as a solo artist more than Tip does. And I think that's what you're talking about. Because even on this last album, Mike, mm-hmm track richer than i ever been like that's just him on a solo mission i haven't heard tip on a solo mission come off that strong in a long time i would still put tip ahead of him overall slightly but ross still flashes like that more than tip does on the solo tip as on the solo dolo no feature tip right right but well, like i said splitting hairs like i'm talking about somebody i got at 15 versus somebody i got at 17 you know Close, close, close. Great career and a great day for those guys because, I mean, I think that's probably one of the most power-packed hip-hop birthday days we have. We got Rakim, J. Cole, and Rick Ross. 
that's heavy. That's that says huge. something about the diversity of the day because three succinctly different artists. Yeah. And, you know, some will tell you that J. Cole is the best of his era. I mean, Mike, when you start, this is what I mean is it's like, well, part of the reason why Tony Gwynn is the best hitter of his era, Mike, is because, well, damn, every season he hit over 300. Cole is doing that. Mm -hmm. He hits over 300 when he steps to the plate. And, and here's the thing with it, and this is what I'm talking about, about how we may need to rate it fairly. Well, he steps to the plate, Mike, and here's the thing. You don't know if it's going to be a single, double, triple, or home run, but he's going to hit the ball. Just don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, you know where Rick Ross drops he something. Make, but he's going to make contact. Some of these guys be swinging and missing. He deserves credit for that. Yeah, Brian says, who's better, Ross or game? I think that's more of the conversation, to be honest. I mean, Same they're, I think they're both extremely improved because I remember game on the documentary, as dope as the album is, as an MC. You can hear his improvement from now to where he was then. Yeah. Uh, I think the edge that I would give game is him being battle tested, but the edge that I would give Rick Ross is just how how much he adds to other people's songs. He'll well, go out there say, and so, be so, a standout feature. So I, that's exactly what I was about to say. So here's where Ross is standing out, where game isn't, and maybe some of it is politics. Ross got crazy features. He's probably got one of the Ross's best feature career, catalogs from, there is. From the jump, crazy yeah. features. And so he got his features on top of a camp comparable catalog to game. I actually would give game the slight edge as an MC because I thought game was a better MC initially than Ross was, although they both improved. The MC that you hear on the documentary two and 2.5 is not the MC that you hear on the documentary. He is vastly improving. He is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I even think the I'm MC on the documentary is better than the MC that's on Port of Miami. Easily. Yeah. Mike, I'm not a fan of Port of Miami. It's because he's not that dope yet. I'm not a fan of the first two albums, uh, Port of Miami or Trill. He's not that, or Trilla. He's not that dope. Here, okay. I am, here I am is where he flashed for me. Maybe yeah. that music two on the third album deeper is deeper than rap, right? That's when it happened. That's when I was like, oh no, he's spitting. I need to listen to this album. And here I, I like, am oh, shit, is the record. Spitting. Here I am is the record that changed everything. Uh Nas the Goat says, nobody talks about Lupe Fiasco, and I wonder why. I think that's I think, you know, this is the thing I think about Lupe. And me and my group went through this too. I think Lupe was slightly ahead of the era that would have embraced him to the highest. He was a good, what did he come out in, like, 05? Nah, before that. That's the cool. The cool is 05. 05 Food liquor is before the cool. That. Was it 04? Food and liquor, like, oh, no, Mike. I thought food and liquor was like, what was, people in the chat, when, when did food and liquor come out? Oh, you're right. Food and liquor is 05. I'm tripping. Okay. Because I remember the cool coming out around the time my daughter was born, so that'd be closer to 07. If... If Lupe Fiasco comes out with the cool in 2010, his career is totally different. Mike, and, what you do know, you think and I think he was slightly ahead of the digital era. He was around the time when radio was still important. And I think that making his debut during that period, I don't want to say hurt him, but it was just tough for him to adjust to all the stuff that was going on. If he would have came out in the internet era... I think that, you know, things would have been slightly different as far as, like, how much he's hurrahed. But, again, the people who know lyrics know. And they rock with Lupe. Yeah, they're right. That was 06. What? Food um, and liquor? Yeah. yeah because, cool remember, he was on late registration at 05. No, no, yeah, because the cool was December of 07. That's yeah. what I was saying. That was the year as my daughter was born. I remember playing the cool that, that first year that she was yeah. born a lot. I mean, Mike, personally for me, I mean, I know a lot of people lean on Food and Liquor. I think The Cool is a superior project because he's a superior MC and lyricist. Like, just off a of go-go gadget flow and dumb it down, exactly. good night. Good I mean, night. even when that whole well, Royce the 5'9 thing went down, I told you how that was going to go. No, 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 you did, and you were right. Lupe is the lyricist. I forgot about that guy that made go-go gadget flow and The Coolest and yeah. dumb it down. So he's been forgotten some, but you want to know why he's been forgotten? And here's what's the beautiful thing about the cool. 
oh, he took his masterful lyricism and he made them into innovative concepts that you can listen to. It's been a lot of lyrical stuff mm-hmm. that sometimes is inaudible to the years because it's just not pieced together as well as the way the cool and food and liquor was. So his problem has been piecing the song together to match his lyrical ability. He's spitting crazy everywhere all the time. But look at, look at how he formatted uh, uh, part one and part two of the cool on food and liquor and then the coolest, the follow-up. You get what I'm saying? No, you're right. Like, he exists in that format as a storyteller and a lyricist of the highest order. If he would have kept that format, we're talking about somebody probably would have been considered the best lyricist in the game for his generation, but he didn't Straight keep up. that format to give us those records. We don't have nothing but dumb it down and go, go, gadget flow. What's the record on lasers? You know what I'm talking I about. Think lasers was, that was tough, man. And, and again, get I third. didn't like it, Mike, because it's like, Nobody yeah, you're rhyming it. your ass off. Like, Nobody about liked it. What are you rhyming your ass off about? Because you was rhyming about something once upon a time. You feel me what I'm saying? Yeah. What are you rhyming about now? There's one song on Lasers where it's like lyrically, like he's somewhere else, but I know you somewhere else. Make the records. Make the cool. Go, go, gadget. Mike, go, go, gadget. Throw that shit crazy. I'm like, he, Mike, he's he's as lyrical as Black Thought or Nas or Rakim on that record, and it's super catchy and super fun. He has the capability to do it. Kick push, Mike. No, you're right. Push. Mike, kick push sounds like something that could have been on Midnight Marauders, Mike. I mean that in the highest. All right, listen. I'm gonna say this, and I'm just gonna be honest. And you know what I'm saying? I'm cool with people who are cool with Lupe. I think what tuned me out when you mentioned Midnight Marauders when he went up on stage at that Tribe Called Quest Honors thing at VH1, and he messed up the verse scenario, and his response, his response was like, "Yo, I ain't even really listen to Tribe like that." You know what I'm saying? Q-Tip begged me to do it. I really grew up on Spice One, 8-Ball, MJG. Now, regardless if that's so true or not, oh, whatever. He's from Shot town so that's not... It's no, not no, 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 that's fine. But it's like, you know, don't throw Tip and them under the bus. Like, if you messed up the words, just keep it moving or whatever. But, you know, young artists do that. It's an ego thing, whatever. And I think that as a fan, though, that's what kind of tuned me out, like, he nice, but what's he on? Well, you can't disrespect the forefathers. No. And, because what I mean, people have to understand the- is the people that you might be throwing a little shade to, your fans are fans of those people. Because regardless, you, if, you, say, regardless uh, if you really uh, did listen to Tribe like that, more than likely the people who listen to you are Tribe fans. I was about to say, if... And I mean, and this is just, you and know, they're not going to pick you over tribe. This is a harsh reality. I was about to say, most of your fans probably belong to De La, Yeah. Tribe and the Roots first, which is part of the reason why his stuff hasn't fared so well, because he fits in their lane and they have consistently performed better than and, and made quality material, which so some well, of they have more work. to go on. They had a real and, they had and, their fans were solidified. You're not going to get me to not be a tribe fan. You haven't also, done enough to do that. I mean, I mean, let's just say this, too. It's like, you know, well, you're not as entertaining, as conversational as most is. And he's everything that the MC that you are, too. We'd rather have most, too. So it's like, that's what I'm saying about how he didn't play his cards right. As a lyricist, he's right there with anybody that you want to name, but you don't give the feeling that Daylight gives, or Tribe give, or Most give, or The Roots give. The thing and is, he, too... He says stuff like that, it's misstated. It's misappropriated. The reason why they even had you doing the Tribe tribute is because your fan, the their fans connect with you. you. Yeah. Exactly. I told Mike Kick Push could have been on Midnight Marauders. There aren't too many rappers that make tracks that belong on Midnight Marauders. And so, with you doing stuff like that, you're turning the fans that rock with you off. Because more than likely, you know, and there's people like us who listen to everything. Coming Out Hard is one of my favorite albums. But I'm from the South. More than likely, most 8-Ball and MJG and Spice One fans Ain't checking for you like that. So don't go out there and disrespect the Tribe fans. And, I, and I'm sure, you know, at his older age, he would say, you know what, that was a misstep, shouldn't have done that, whatever. But I'm just telling you what I'm trying to think of as a fan that kind of made me be like, eh. And that, and that was the moment. Because, again, you know, I'm a huge Q-Tip fan. And I no felt mind. like that was unnecessary. <laughs> like, that turned no me off as a fan. 
Mike, Tribe has one of the most loyal fan bases, and their fan base is a correlation to the people that like him. So major misstep on his part. Tribe fans are loyal. You know who else did loyal. that? Loyal. Your boy. Um, I don't know where he thought this was going to go. Who was uh, who said that about Ghost? Action Bronson. Like, what you think's going to happen? Like, dude. He's better off staying quiet. Don't say anything, man. Like, we're ghost fans. And honestly, I can't even really listen to his music like that because he sounds too much like ghost to me. And that hey, was Mike. one thing. And I still check for him because I thought the music that Action Bronson was putting out was quality. But when you went out there and disrespected ghost, I'm like, well, I'm really done now. Hold on, Mike. I didn't even hear that he had disrespected ghosts. So I saw a ghost response when Ghost is in the robe in the hotel. And he, remember that? When I saw the response, I was like, I can't listen to fam music no more. He messing with my guy. He messing with Ghost. It's like I'm we we done. It's like you fucking with Ghost. It's like we done here. And so I, and how, how I'll do be honest with you, Mike, I haven't heard go. any of his music since. I haven't. How do people like, think Ghost went up on go. live? And it's I was like, oh, I was like, oh, he done he done pissed my guy off. I was like, yeah, we done. <laughs> we done. But this relationship is over. How do people think I'm rock with go. Ghostface Killer? You know what I'm saying? My relationship was with Ghostface. My relationship was with Ghostface Killer. Yeah, I, shit. Right. <laughs> I'm listening to you because he said it's cool. Right. I'm 14 <laughs> when the purple tape is coming out, Mike. Like you cannot make me a fan. I'm 14 when the purple tape came out. I'm 12 when Enter the Wu Tang came out. I'm 20 when Supreme Clientele came out. Like you can't do nothing with me. Like we done right there with the relationship. Well, on that note, man, let's get up out of here. We're like two and a half hours in. I hope people enjoyed the show tonight, man. And if you're not subscribed to the According to Hip Hop YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can know when we're going live. And go check out um, According to Hip Hop.com. And we should have that yearbook for you guys next week, man. I'm looking forward to presenting it to you. I think we're going to do a whole show on it. And also, Monday, we're going to do the uh, long awaited mock verses of jay-z and nas we got nas rap round table they have jay-z uh this is gonna be fun i want everybody to tune in we're gonna do it on this channel because the people are going to be picking the winners of each round so it should be cool hey mike it's rockin's birthday and not no not to j cole or ross but the god was first i want to list some songs off right quick because people need to understand because all these records are classic this is what i mean about he's mm -hmm. a problem Follow the leader, microphone fiend, Eric B is president, Boom. mahogany, paid in full, I ain't no joke, lyrics of fury, in the ghetto, know the ledge, I know you got soul, my melody, alpha and omega, let the rhythm hit them, don't sweat the technique, 15 pack, Mike. Don't sweat the technique, it's fire. And you know what, fire. he gets a lot of shit for it because it's not what those other records are, but if it existed leader. in its own... Mike, how about this? So if those records that came before it don't exist, and he comes out with Don't Sweat the Technique, the effect is almost He's a the star. same. He's a star. It's almost the same as if when he drops Eric B as president. If we don't hear any of that other stuff, and he comes out with Don't Sweat the Technique, the effect is almost the same. He's like that. We still hear Don't Sweat the Technique on, like, NBA halftimes and all that. I think ESPN plays it a lot when they play their NBA games. Hey, Mike, you know I'm a life insurance agent now. Can I tell you a little story right quick? That's yeah. actually my motivational song in the morning when I get in my car. It's Don't Sweat the Technique. That's the first song I put on. His rhyme schemes on there are crazy, man. I feel like Know the Ledge, he's rhyming his ass off on there. Yes, it it's a follow the leader type of mic performance on there. Uh, you know, Casualties of War is another one. Pass the hand grenade. We can keep going. He's rapping right. crazy. Right. No Omega. I, listen, I, I, I truly I believe. Alpha and Omega. I got Alpha and Omega down on that top fifteen because that's 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 that bar song like lyrics of Fury is where it just rhyme wise it's like oh well you can't do that. Nobody builds his rhymes up like their rhymes up like Rakim does. Like that whole stanza where he's talking about um, the ears and the eyes and the mouth. On no, no Omega. Well, no, it's the first verse. What's the first verse? Yes, yeah, the first verse where he's talking about the. Um, the Battle Cat, where he was talking about uh, loading the mic up with explosives. Yeah. And watch it blow like a hand grenade. And it's like he's taking you through the whole scene. And yeah. it's like, who yeah. raps like this? He's building the shit. Yeah. That sounds like, like you know. Like a technician. It's, it's incredible, man. Like a musician. Like a technician and Nobody, a musician. Nobody, listen, I don't care what anybody says. 
Nobody wanted to see this guy in a battle. And if by any chance, because I think it's been said that it was about Kane. If uh, Let the Rhythm Hit Him's about Kane, I understand why you don't respond to that. This thing is rapping crazy on there, man. Like, just name 15 songs. He's rapping crazy on all of these songs. Like, I'm talking about the level. Like, no, no, no. This is the same level. This is A plus A1, 10 of 10 MC. Will Chamberlain on, on rap, man. Will, yeah. Will Chamberlain stuff. All right, man. You have a great weekend. Y'all have a great weekend out there. And, um, yeah, stay tuned. We got so much coming.